Welcome to the Risk Forever channel guys, the channel which shares the most relevant tips and tricks on how to win at risk, and improve your rank in no time. Subscribe to the channel and you won't even see how fast you will become so much better at risk. Push that notification bell to see new videos first. This is your host champion ever. And today we are playing 6 player fixed card game on classic risk map. Settings, Alliance is on, Balance Blitz dice rolls in 60 seconds per turn. This time I'm playing against 2 beginner rank players who are orange and yellow, and 3 intermediate rank players who are purple, green and blue. As always wish me best of luck guys, I will definitely need the best of it today as usually. Alliances and good diplomacy can take a huge role playing with low rank players, so I'm very happy that I've already got an alliance request sent my way. The yellow player was the one who sent it, and of course I gladly accepted it. Additionally the yellow player sent me a heart emoji, so I think we might be very good friends in this game. But I don't know, I don't really set up my expectations way too high, as it could be possible that he sent alliances to absolutely everyone. But who knows guys. We are going to see how it goes. I'm very glad that he has almost already captured Africa, meaning that most likely he will be one of the stronger players if he successfully holds it. So he will be able to fight other opponents rather than being abused by them. Well, kinda bad that he put his troops to Europe, the continent I want to go for, but I mean I understand that he did that just because to let the green player move his troops out from Africa. So then the yellow player with these European troops could come back to it and fully capture it. But who knows, I might be wrong, maybe he will not let me capture Europe. We need to wait for another turn and see. Alright, so the blue player is going for North America. So far it's really unknown if he can successfully capture and hold it while there are so many other player troops in it, and additionally we can see that the green South American player seems to worry more about him rather than the yellow player. And I mean that's good, as while the green player might be busy with blue, the yellow player could focus on other players, so unless that other player will be me, I wouldn't really like it for sure, in that case I would just have to be without a continent at all. But let's remember that he sent me an alliance request back in the beginning of the game, so I think I shouldn't worry that much as I do now. We should be very good friends, right? Yeah, it looks like. As he just moved out all his troops from Europe, so he might be fine of me going for it. That's great. So just not sure about the other players yet, but we will figure it out as well. I've just sent a thumbs up emoji to the yellow player to congratulate him of capturing Africa, and to appear being more friendly. As you know guys, it can be very important to keep the good relationships with low rank players, they could help you win the game. So I want that the yellow player would consider me as the best friend in this game. Well, it seems he made an alliance with the green player too, because we can see they don't really guard against each other, but not necessarily, maybe the yellow player just know that it isn't the best idea to strongly guard against your neighboring player, because he will be starting to put more and more troops on the border too, so there will be a huge tension between you and one of you will finally decide to attack each other wasting a lot of troops, or in the worst case scenario even both of you ending up losing the game. So I see the yellow player knows about the diplomacy with neighboring players. But still the fact that he put the majority of his troops in this middle African territory rather than to the left one, scares me a little bit. As while we can predict that he will be loyal to green, it might not necessarily be in the same way with me, but we are going to see where he is going to put his troops next turn. In any case I'm not in a rush to capture Europe yet, because by ending up even weaker than I'm currently are, it would be even easier for someone to potentially take me out soon. I don't have any huge army right now, so basically anybody wouldn't hesitate to invade unguarded Europe, and for proper guarding I wouldn't have enough troops, the yellow and purple players could still invade me if they wanted. So I'm playing as safe as I can right now, as by ending up very weak, I would highly increase my chances of getting eliminated first. Anyways, have you just seen guys? The purple player's turn has just glitched out, she ended it but it started again. Well, she didn't get any extra troops or cards for it, so that's fine, but it was really strange to see it. And good, 
the yellow player hasn't added any more troops to his middle African border, so I think he might let me hold Europe after I capture it. And yeah, that's right, he didn't even capture any territory in it, so I'm even more confident now. Also I really like that it was the territory next to Purple's Australian army, meaning that the purple player could have gotten a little bit irritated by that, thinking that the yellow player potentially looks forward to attack her. But I don't really know, maybe the purple player didn't care about it at all. We are going to see. But if so, then it's good. As the yellow and purple players are the ones who could the most easily prevent me of capturing and holding Europe, so if they're going to feel a little bit irritated of each other, then instead of attacking me, they will be keeping an eye on each other. And that is so good, as I would be the only player who holds a 5 troops continent, gaining an advantage against others. Alright, the orange player has moved into Europe, that was a little bit unexpected, but I think he only did that because he wants to go to North America, he isn't setting his troops up to take me out, right? Yeah, I don't think so. But in any case I have a 10 troop set at 3 cards anyways, so I'm good either way. No matter what the orange player decides to do. And OMG, OMG guys. I cannot believe that the yellow player is destroying purple, la la la. I think the glitch of the purple player's turn starting again has really irritated him. But I mean he realizes that he isn't going to get these three purple's troops in North America, right? Or as a good ally he specially left these troops for me. Hmm. If so, then it's really appreciated yellow. Thank you very much. Together we might be able to do a lot of good things in this game. So let's take the purple player out. And I'm wondering whether I should take someone out as well, like orange or blue. Well, they only have three cards each, so I will pass for now. But I think I might take them both or at least one of them next turn if nobody does. As you can see I additionally cleared out these blue and green territories from the isolated Asian corner for me. I'm thinking of taking orange and blue for sure, and when it comes to green I don't really know, as I'm not sure how many troops I'm going to have, but I still captured his Asian territory, so I wouldn't have to add any additional troops over there in case I will be able to. I decided to keep the army in Asia instead of fortifying it back to North America, because I don't really know if I will be able to take all of them three out, like there's a possibility that they could trade in sets. Well, most likely I will be able to take blue and orange out. But with the green player being still alive, I think it would be great to take Australia from yellow and use the turtling strats, letting green to capture both of the Americas and yellow Africa plus Europe so eventually they wouldn't be satisfied with each other starting a big conflict, while I would be watching the world burn. But I don't know, maybe I would still stick with Europe instead of taking Australia from yellow, as I see he is a very good of an ally and I don't really want to betray him. So I'm not sure guys, my next turn is going to be very interesting. But wow guys, he still continues crushing enemies for me, so I could get the cards. So I think we really going to conquer the whole world together. So yeah, we really need to stick in alliance. He is like the best ally ever. Ever and forever. Let's take orange and blue players out. As you can see I've made quite a big mistake over here by not using my 10 troops army to crush these 5 blue troops and 2 extra Europe's territories, as every troop matters, and especially when I had a potential opportunity in my head to take out green as well. But fortunately I've got a very good blitz roll blitzing 5 blues troops in Europe, so I haven't lost much, as who knows, otherwise I could have even failed taking blue out in case bad blitz rolls have happened, so then the green player would have taken blue and orange for free. But as you can see with the good blitz rolls I managed to get it through, so now it's the decision point for me whether I should try taking the green player out as well. As I'm not guaranteed to successfully take him out, I could drastically fail. And while it seems that I have more troops than both of them combined, let's not forget that green is going to trade in a set, and the yellow player is going to get the troops from his continents. But if I successfully take him out, then I win the match with the game not becoming a very boring stalemate. So let's take that risk. And wow, I succeeded guys. The dice don't hate me this time. So the victory is already in my pocket. But don't close the video yet, 
because I'm going to show another interesting game. This one was called When Beginner Becomes Your Best Ally, and another one is called When Intermediate Gives You a Pro Advice, and by the way, if you're watching this video yellow. Then a big shout out goes to you as you really were the best and very sweet ally. I assume you recognized me but I am not sure. But I really appreciate this good game, it was very fun. We definitely got them rookies. So moving to the next game this time I'm playing against two beginner rank players who are blue and yellow, one intermediate rank player who is orange, one expert rank player who is green, and one expert difficulty bot which is purple. It's supposed to be another real player but unfortunately he didn't ready up. As always wish me best of luck guys, as I will definitely need it more than always. As it seems I won't get any continent anytime soon in this game. But I will still try my best to survive even without it. Well, I could potentially go for Australia, the green player didn't add any troops into it, but on the other hand he added some to his Asian army which is near, so maybe he still would like to go for it. Also let's remember that there is Orange who is by being the fifth player is going to get five troops, so maybe he will be the one who decides to go for Australia it being the most popular continent. So for these reasons I decided to put my troops into North America instead, it's clear that I'm not getting it anytime soon, but at least I will be able to safely put my troops to one big army and survive I guess. And then we will see, I might get some opportunity. But oh no, oh no guys. This purple bot has just added its troops to North America. I didn't expect it at all, so now I'm being without any continent at all, but oh well. It's not the end of the world. I'm playing with low rank players anyways, so I shouldn't worry too much. Even though I will be one of the weakest players, I shouldn't be that much of a target, as I guess they're mostly going to pay the attention to other players who have continents as well, so while I will be without a continent at all, I will be forgotten. So anyways, let's just add these troops in Asia attacking the territory of Afghanistan to make a better way for the orange player to go into Australia, I want that the orange and green players fight each other for it, so then with my Asian army after trading in a set I could move into cleared out Australia taking it for myself. But yeah, so far I'm not really sure what orange's plans are, whether he will fight for South America or Australia, or just simply go for Africa, or decides to switch going for Europe, as he has just added his troops over there. So I don't know guys. But after I think he will go for one of the continents, either Africa or Europe, instead of fighting over South America or Australia, so I guess no cleared out continent for me. But after all I think he will go for one of the continents, either Africa or Europe instead of fighting over South America or Australia, so I guess no cleared out continent for me. But not a big problem for me because you don't necessarily need to have a continent in order to win the game. The players can just end up destroying themselves way too much, so then one by one you will be able to take them out, trading in sets and getting a good amount of additional troops. But after all I think he will go for one of the continents, either Africa or Europe instead of fighting over South America or Australia, so I guess no cleared out continent for me. But not a big problem for me because you don't necessarily need to have a continent in order to win the game. The players can just end up destroying themselves way too much, so then one by one you will be able to take them out, trading in sets and getting a good amount of additional troops. But of course, Without a continent you will be in disadvantage over the ones who have some, so it's better to get one if possible. But if you haven't gotten one, and especially playing with low rank players, then don't panic too much, as you might still get some opportunities later on in the game. And OMG, OMG guys! The blue player has just invaded green into Australia, while the orange player yellow into South America. That's awesome, because now I'm not going to have any disadvantage among all these players anymore, and there's even a possibility that they end up being weaker than me or even end up being taken off soon. And the less players in the game, the better is for me, as the bigger odds I have to win. As let's remember that if we don't take into the account any luck factor, then in the 6 player game you influence it by almost 17%, and in comparison when there are 3 players in the game left then the percent grows up to 33. 
Of course stronger players will have the bigger decision space of what they can and want to do, but they still not guaranteed to win as long as the balance of the game is sustained. Anything can happen, and from being the strongest, they can end up being the weakest. Anyways, I really think that the orange player made a big mistake by blitzing yellow's troops over here, he should have either tried fully taking him out, or not blitzing his troops at all. Possibly leaving South America as the yellow player has become the bot anyways, and the bots just simply leave their continent after they capture it. So he would have gotten this continent without crushing a lot of troops, assuming nobody else would have moved into it. But since the orange player made the yellow player barely alive while at the same time losing quite a bunch of troops too, now I can take both of them out as long as I have a decent set of troops. And fortunately I do guys, so let's go for it. The orange player is my ally, but I would rather not miss a free kill, when basically the only real opponent left is green. As the purple player was the bot from the beginning of the game, and the blue player is making really random moves, and next to green, not me. So by getting rid of an additional opponent, who is not really needed in the game, even though ally, I will definitely increase my chances to win for sure. So let's just take him out as well. I'm sorry orange for being a bad ally, but it's just the right move to make, which I believe will highly increase my chances to win as I'm already have the same number of troops as blue and green combined. So I'm not sure, maybe I'll add a couple of troops on the North American border, and the rest of them to the African one. Please attack the green player the ghost of the orange player says. Hmm. Well yeah, that's right. Why I would even add more of the troops to South America when I would be able to hold it anyways, while I could totally use them to potentially invade green into Australia. So let's do it guys. I think it's the right move to make, so the orange ghost who was my ally, has just really given me a pro advice. So thank you very much orange, and if you're watching this video, then a big shout out goes to you too. As how could I have forgotten that the blue and green players were fighting for Australia? How could I have not predicted that even with me failing to invade Australia, the blue player being not that much experienced would still make the worst move ever by trying to take Australia from green, at the moment when they should definitely team up on me to not give away the game for me, as with me having a set I could finish taking green easily out, and then finish dealing with blue as well, not caring about the purple bot, as it's always easy to defeat the bots after you deal with your real opponents. Well. Fortunately for them I do not have any single set, so they got lucky over here, otherwise the victory would have been already in my pocket. And how ironic that the purple computer player even helps me dealing with them, lolololol. Poor very poor players called green and blue. No matter what they do, I've already won this game. With them not even having any sets at 3 cards, they are totally doomed to lose. So let's just take them out guys and finish the game for good. The purple computer player will have not a single chance against me at all, at this point I even became twice as strong as it. If you guys enjoyed watching this video, then I would recommend checking some of these out as well. Watching more videos will help you to progress so much faster. Highly increase your skills by simply watching risk videos.